good afternoon and welcome to our broadcast of the best of the Paralympics at London 2012. My name's Amy Bainbridge and gee, do we have a match ahead of us. This is the semi-final of the women's wheelchair basketball. The defending Paralympic champions of this team, you can see on your screen, the United States of America. And they're playing off against the bronze medalists from four years ago, Australia. The US have been so good in this tournament and uh, they've been averaging 62.6 points per game. A lot of that credit goes to the combination of Rebecca Murray and Desi Miller. They're putting up 37 points between them for each game. Very impressive. But this is the Australian side. The 2008 bronze medalists have been headed up by Amber Merritt. But they do have a lot of strength and depth this team and they'll be feeling very confident going into this match. They've had a couple of recent wins over the United States. One was in a friendly in Germany not too long before the Paralympic Games. I don't think we can read too much into that. However, uh, they did, did have a win uh, over the United States. At this year's Paralympic World Cup in Manchester. And Sarah Stewart from Australia had uh, scored 14 points in that match. So she'll be one to watch out for today. But as I mentioned, there's just so much depth in this Australian side. Kobe Crispin is fantastic. Bridie Keane. Kylie Gauchy, the point guard, is a great contributor. We have the very experienced Shelley Chaplin, Sarah Stewart, and, of course, Amber Merritt, among a host of other players. The United States, this is David Kiley, the U.S. coach. In the press, just remember, first person, bam, with movement, and we're getting it out. They took real advantage of us when we were slow to get it out. That was then, this is now, all right? We are totally different teams, all right? Make them pay for pressing you. Make them pay. Pull up the wall, push it up really hard. Um, if we get to a half court, we're running two. So the last word from the coaches there. Coach Kylie talking about breaking the press and forgetting about past results because, as he says, a very different team. So this is the first of two semi-finals uh, being played today. Straight after this, we have the Netherlands and Germany, and then we have the men's semi-finals this evening at North Greenwich Arena. This is semi-final number one. The United States wins the tip-off. Murray with the ball. She looks at her shot straight up there. It's a lovely two-point shot, so a great start for the United States. Gauchi takes her shot. Lovely scoring here. So pressure in the defence from Australia. Schneider, five left, four left on the shot clock. They're under pressure. They're not going to make it in time. So Australia's possession. So that's good defensive pressure from Australia early on. Stewart. Looks to Gauchi. Yeah. 
Lovely steal there. Clear knot from Australia was uh, unable to control the ball and Rebecca Murray got the steal. Hunter is down, but uh, being helped into position. There we have it. Great crowd at North Greenwich Arena. They were just watching uh, the, the Great Britain side. They lost to China in the classification round match. And so China going off to play against Canada for fifth and sixth position. So already China guaranteed to finish better than they did it was seventh in Beijing four years ago. Miller shoots, misses, gets her own rebound and follows it in. So Desi Miller, handy effort from her down the other end. Kobe Crispin passes off to Gauchi. He finds the gap in the key, but just a little high off the backboard. And the United States grabs the defensive rebound. Friday Keane not happy with that call. There's a lot of congestion in the key. You can see she... The chair interfered with the path of Nichols. So we were talking the other day about the chair skills of these girls and just how quick they are around the court. It's really impressive. It takes years to get up to speed. And uh, all the more impressive because both teams are reasonably young. First shot falls. Stewart. So look at her shot here. No. Nope. She does. Lovely. So two points to Stewart. Six plays for the United States in the lead. So a number of fouls being called early on. I do hope none of the players will get into too much foul trouble early on. A nice dish off to Murray. He tries to find the player in the low post position, but Australian player Kobe Crispin was right in the path of the ball. Murray passes in. Schneider back to Murray. The shot clock's gone, so it'll be Australia's possession some reason one of the United States players kept playing on but quickly pulled up. Oh, 
Stewart dishes off to Knott. She's got a free shot there. Two points. Claire Knott. So Miller with nowhere to go. She passes to Murray. So shot clock pressure again. So the defensive pressure from Australia is great. However, a push has just been called on Bridey Keane, I believe. And uh, Dizzy Miller will go to... I think the, the call was for two shots. But anyway, well, look, we're having a timeout. I believe Dizzy Miller will, uh, will, have, will go to the line. Such has been the number of fouls committed by the teams this quarter. There's been a, a lot of fouls. No, There's only a total of four, so she shouldn't go to the line. So a simple message to the United States team, get a stop. Well, stop the Australians flowing into their offence and the Australian players told to stop worrying about the umpires. So clearly just need to focus on their games and stop worrying about what the call is going to be or trying to tell the, Austra the umpires what the call should be. Whose hands it actually? Oh, it's difficult to see even on the replay. The fouls are the thing that are free-flowing at the moment, particularly for the Australians. Seven plays six. We're just about on the halfway mark of the first quarter. for the Australians. Amber Merritt is on. Sarah Stewart is out. And Katie Hill has come on for Kobe Crispin. Chaplin's in there. Merritt unable to score. Nice rebound there from the number eight, Natalie Schneider. And Murray tries to put some pace on down the court. Passes to Hunter. Unable to score again. Oh, I thought there may have been a foul called there, but no. So some great defensive pressure here from the United States. Merritt is in a one-on-two situation. Not ideal to try and get to the basket, so she pulls out. Australians are going to be under a bit of pressure here. And 
The ball slapped out of the hands of Amber Merritt. So a few turnovers in a row here. That's clear not for Australia. Nice attempt from Chaplin, but doesn't fall. So the United States gets on the board again. So Merritt's needing perhaps to protect the ball a little more there. But anyway, she's uh, off to the line for two shots. No, she's not. My apologies. It will be a Australian possession from the side. So the lob's over. Merritt's tall, unable to score. There's been another foul called. I believe it's on Merritt. She's fouled Alana Nichols. So a timeout called by Australia. 10 play six, 3.05 left in the first quarter. And there's a lot of pressure out there on the court. So the winner of this match will go through to the gold medal playoff, which is tomorrow. And the loser will play off for bronze. So talking about trying to draw out the defence and then open up for players to cut through to the basket and go for those high percentage shots, that seems to be the United States' plan of attack at the moment. So Alana Nichols on the line. Merritt snatches the board. She's away. A nice layup there from Amber Merritt goes straight to the basket. It was coast to coast in the end. So Knott passes to Chaplin. Lob over to Merritt. Those long arms of Merritt. Unable to hit all their shots today. Having a little trouble right under the ring. 
So Desi Miller steadies things up ever so slightly. Chaplin's right on her. The shot clock's about to go. Doesn't fall. Australia gets the rebound. Chaplin specifically, and she's off. Passes down the court. Gauchi back in play. She's going to look. She looked at her shot. It was a nice little pass off. A lob over to Merritt. Can oh, pushed backwards. happened there she just reached back a little far and tipped herself over don't know that it was much due to the interference of the players the defensive players So it's tight in this first quarter. Ten plays eight. It's hardly a free-flowing affair. Not waits for the opportunity. Chaplin weaves, looks to her shot, doesn't fall. Nice rebound from Woodson Smith, the American. Shot finally falls for the United States. So that was Miller, two points. So a stacked defense there from the United States. They put up a wall and then split. Gauchi, will she look at her shot here? She looks to merit. He pops it in for two points. So a nice little way to finish off the first quarter for the Australians, but they still trail the United States by two points. A very tight first quarter, 12 plays 10. Not much difference in the statistics, as you'd expect. Australia shooting at 38% and the United States shooting at 44%. Australia's had five more opportunities than the United States in terms of field goals and uh, just hasn't been able to capitalise. They've had a, quite a few misses. And in terms of the rebounding, reasonably even five rebounds to Australia. Uh, United States has pulled down eight. Teams about equal on turnovers. So that's quarter time as the teams head back out onto court and there's two points in at a very, very tight first quarter. 
great game of basketball we've got underway here. And that'll be two down and one shot to come for Amber Merritt. Those long arms of her under the basket, she thoroughly enjoyed that, a big grin. So Merritt gets the rebound, gets the score. Misses her free throw. And the United States off again. Get past over, it was always going to be a dangerous one. Merritt gets the steal and she's down the court. She wants to score. She does. You can tell her confidence is up now. She's made a couple of key scores and now she just wants it and wants it. All of a sudden, Australia in front, 14-12. Really putting the reigning Olympic cha uh, Paralympic champions under pressure at North Greenwich. Miller scores, so responding to Australia to tie the scores up at 14 all. It's a very physical match, you can see. And I tell you what, the intensity compared to the classification matches that were played this morning is, well, it is off the charts as far as that's concerned. There's just no comparison. These are two quality sides. Defending Paralympic champions want that gold medal again. Australia wants to do better than bronze. Merritt again. She didn't take her shot that time. She was under a bit too much pressure. Ball bounces out. Toby Crispin, who's been a fantastic player. She's only young and her chair skills are extraordinary. So are her ball skills. So the United States back in front again, 16-14 in the second quarter. So both of these teams have been beaten once. Surprisingly, Australia was beaten by Canada in the preliminary rounds. Chaplin with nowhere to go. She was trapped in there. Passes off. Oh, the shot is good. Clear not. From the free throw line, it was a lovely looking shot. So scores tied up again, 16 all.
And the ball smacked away, but it was off Australian hands. And so the United States maintains possession, this time from the baseline. You see the tight defence Australians are playing. So, again, the shot clock came into play there. Chaplin fakes it. She's so good at that. Fails to get the basket to fall. United States right on the boards, particularly at the defensive end. And that's two points for the United States. 18-16. So coach John Triscari from the Australians is questioning the umpire as to what the call was and why. <laughs> Chaplin lobs over to Merritt. Gee, they're using her so much in this second quarter. Pops it back out to Chaplin. Oh, lovely move there by Kobe Crispin, and she scores. So Crispin just cutting over the basket. You can see her roll around there. Gosh, she's got straight, great skills. Chaplin tilts in defense, not enough. Can't get her hand to the ball. And Gee, there's a lot of defensive pressure now. The call was mismatch. But uh, with the pressure from the shot clock and the defensive pressure, they just couldn't get it base in time. Chaplin drives through, dishes off to Crispin, who hits the rim. Just need a little bit more air to that, or perhaps to slightly change her angle. Gauchi looks at her shot. Oh, unlucky, rolls out. Australia maintains possession, though. Katie Hill. So Australia is rotating their bench well, and that was a lovely, lovely cut from Kylie Gauchi.
So that pass going awry, but the Australians seem to have had more of the ball at least in this particular quarter. The scoreline locked up at 20 all. Just under three and a half minutes left in this first half. Kobe Crispin. A lovely shot. Claire not playing well in this second quarter. She weaves her way baseline. Very difficult shot, rolling right under the basket. Tips out of her chair and quickly rights herself. Murray's come up with the ball. And that's being called a backcourt, has it? Not entirely sure why that whistle was blown. It may have been because one of the players... So here's the steal from Hill. Nice work by her. So Hill looks to a shot, unsuccessful. The Americans win the defensive rebound. And a quick acceleration up the court, but Difficult defense is there, but that should be too easy. It is for Schneider, the number eight for the United States of America. So neither side able to eke out an advantage at this point. The biggest difference we've had in the scoreline has been four points. Kobe Crispin under the basket, lovely. And it is enjoyable to watch a match where the teams are so evenly matched. Lovely shot there from Murray. Rebecca Murray is the number four for the United States. So Australia perhaps forcing it inside a little bit on occasion. They looking so much to their bigger players inside and utilising them so well, but it's not always on and they'd be better off probably running a proper offence and, and being a little more patient to wait for that opportunity inside other than trying to get it straight in there as we saw just then. So it's a nice little play, play by the United States, but unable to finish it off. Hill. Looks to Crispin. Bridie Keane looks at her shot. Oh, lovely shooting by Australia. So can they go into this second half with the advantage? So bit of, uh, well, sportsmanship or sportswomanship going on there with the chairs and a bit of bumping and some aggression. Less than 10 seconds. Can Australia go in with the advantage? No, nope. scores are going to be tied up going into half time. Wow. Well, what a game we have here. Ladies and gentlemen, 26-26, Australia and the United States. USA, the defending Paralympic champions, are being pushed here by Australia, who won bronze in Beijing four years ago. They don't want bronze again. They want gold.
The United States, such a classy outfit and rarely troubled through this tournament. Four years ago, these two teams met in the semi-final and the USA won that very convincingly, 60-47. So a 13-point win in this very match four years ago. So the USA's shooting percentage is slightly better than the Australians. The Australians taking a lot more opportunities. I do feel that they've tried to rush it inside just a little on occasion. So the coaching staff there for the United States having a little conference before they go in and address the players in the change rooms. As we look at some of the highlights from the first half, the USA winning the tip-off at the very start of the game. <laughs> Go! 60 seconds then, guys. Let's see. She shoots. She shoots an air ball. We go to the layup. He scores. We go. Let's go. Oh, he's got some skills. Oh. He shoots again. He scores again. How we doing? Come on. Let's have a go. Let's see him. He shoots. He misses. He goes for the alley. -oop. Boom! Keep the support going, another 2012, let's see it, come on. Keep it going, let's see it, 30 seconds to go. Right, guys, what have we got? He shoots, he misses, he shoots. So the highlights from the first half of play, and we'll have a quick look at the team statistics and the individual statistics as well. We'll start off with the United States of America, and Rebecca Murray is the top scorer for the USA with 12 points. That's her most notable statistic. And uh, look, Desi Miller has 10 points. Neither player really contributing on the rebound front there. As for the rebounds, uh, I can tell you that Schneider has been a good contributor. Just two points she scored, but uh, she's pulled down five rebounds for this match so far. And Rose Holloman. Uh, has pulled down four. She's from the Timberwolves in Minneapolis. So they're the most notable performances. Just three players haven't had a time off the bench yet. You need the Australians. If the Australians cheer, do you think they'll win? If the Australians cheer a bit louder. So if we have a look at what's happening on the Australian front, we don't really have a particularly dominant well, scorer. Go. Amber Merritt has the shot eight you. points. She's got three rebounds. And Claire Knott has shot six points. And four points to Kobe Crispin. So a bit of a spread there, really. Four points to Kylie Gauchi. And uh, Chaplin has two assists and three rebounds. So they're the most notable of the statistics for the individual players. If we look at the team statistics, so the United States uh, has shot a field goal percentage of 52% in comparison to the Australians' 43%. Total of 17 rebounds compared to Australia's 10. So the United States doing a lot better on the rebound front. And on the other side, we've got Mackenzie, you right? Yeah. How old are you, Mackenzie? 11. You gonna win? Yes. Confident, right. We're gonna do dance so what we're gonna do, 30 seconds each. You two are gonna start, then Mackenzie's gonna come in afterwards, okay? Afterwards, the, te the teams and the crowd are gonna cheer. They're gonna so a bit of half-time entertainment here, a healthy Let's crowd at North Greenwich, yours. and the action is really hotting up today. This is a fantastic contest between Australia and the United States. And plenty more to come. Germany and the Netherlands is the next semi-final on this court. And Germany have been extremely efficient this tournament, shooting the tournament high of two-point field goals at 48.9%. And they're also hitting 50% of their three-pointers. 
and they're uh, giving up only 40.4 points per game. And the teams that are doing really well don't just structure their offense around one player. They have a number of contributors. And Germany is a typical example of that. They've got a three-fold scoring threat of Marina Mo Monen, Annika Zegen and Gesha Schunemann. They combine for an average of 43.6 points during this tournament. Now, the Netherlands heads the rebounding standings with 45 boards per game. And they've also conceded the fewest turnovers, so averaging eight turnovers a game. It's an excellent statistic. They've not really shooting outside. In fact, they've only taken one three-point attempt in the competition, so... They really do rely heavily uh, on the inside, inside presence of Mariska Bajer, who's averaging 24.6 points a game. She's the third most overall. And Germany and the Netherlands played each other in three pre-games friendlies last month. The Dutch won twice. Previously, Germany won 63-40 when the sides met in the quarterfinals of the 2010 World Championships. They also had a 43-28 victory in the quarterfinals at the 2008 Paralympic Games in Beijing. So there you have it. That is the next semi-final, semi-final number two. And it's coming up straight after this match. There'll be a short break in proceedings and then semi-final two will be on. The evening session starts at 7 o'clock local London time. I do hope you can join us for all the coverage of the wheelchair basketball. Seven and a half minutes left in this half-time break. Have a quick look at some of the other sports that are happening around London 2012. At this point in time, we've got the mixed individual boccia. We've got the football five-a-side, goalball, shooting, table tennis and wheelchair tennis. We've got the women's singles. I was out at the tennis yesterday. It was a fantastic venue. So... We have, I can tell you, just looking at the bronze medal match in the women's singles at Eaton Manor on centre court that's just been played. Jiska Rifuen from the Netherlands has just clinched the bronze medal against Sabine Ellerbrock from Germany. The scoreline was 6 2, 7 6. So that's the women's bronze medal match. On day eight, of course, it is Thursday, the 6th of September. But we are into day eight of competition. So good result. Riff Ewan uh, lost to Esther Vergeer yesterday in the semi final, so was then had to play off for the bronze medal. And uh, it will be two Dutch players playing off for the gold medal in the women's singles wheelchair tennis. So clearly the Netherlands just a dominant force in that sport at this level. Now, the men's football five-a-side that's happening at the moment, it's only just underway and uh, no score that I can report to you yet between Spain and France. That's being played in the Riverbank Arena. Everything's nice and close here at the Olympic Park. So walking distance from the wheelchair tennis to the Riverbank Arena if you're lucky enough to have tickets to those. Now China is playing Finland in the women's goalball. I can't report a score to you there. I don't believe anyone has scored yet. It's only just gotten underway. Got some shooting on and we have the women's team table tennis, class one to three. And uh, Korea is leading Croatia in that team event at XL, the North Arena one. Uh, it appears Korea is leading Croatia 2-1 at this stage, but there's still another match going on. Well, there'll be more matches to follow, so that is not a full result just yet.
If you're just joining us for our broadcast, this is the Best of London 2012 and our coverage of the Women's Wheelchair Basketball Semi-Final Number 1. The players just making their way back onto the court after their halftime conference in the change rooms. Three and a half minutes left of this halftime break and it is a very, very tight game indeed. 26 all Australia versus the United States. The United States were up by two points uh, 12-10 after the first quarter. Then the Australians just outscored the United States 16-14 in that second quarter. The baskets aren't easy to come by at the moment and uh, shooting percentage is reasonable. The United States doing better than the Australians in that regard, but the Australians, of course, taking more attempts. So a real danger here. The United States wants to defend its Paralympic gold medal. The Australians finished up with bronze in 2008. Don't, they don't want bronze again. They want gold as well. Of course, only one can go through. That gold medal match is being played tomorrow. And the men's gold medal match and, of course, the bronze medal match will be played on Saturday. So the women's draw tomorrow and the men's on Saturday and the men's semifinals. Uh, later tonight, so they have the great luxury of having an extra day's rest before coming out to play at North Greenwich on Saturday. But it is a very, very, very long tournament, I can tell you. It's been going for over a week now. We're still not done yet, even for those that aren't in the medal race. Well, it all continues because Canada is facing off against China for a place uh, to work out the placings for fifth and sixth. And Me Mexico and Great Britain are playing off for seventh and eighth. Eight. France has finished on the bottom of the competition in tenth position. Brazil has finished in ninth position. So still a lot of basketballs to be played here at London 2012. So here we go, the start of the second half. Scores locked up at 26 apiece. Australia and the United States both vying for a position in the gold medal final tomorrow. Gauchi looks at her shot and it's in. A good start for Australia in the second half.
So Gauchi to Crispin. They look to run their offense. The nice spacing out to try and create some movement in the key. Not runs into a brick wall. Crispin takes the shot. It doesn't fall. So Murray with the ball. Bit of a fumble there from Kobe Crispin. Nice pass low to Keane, who pops it back up to Crispin. Gauchi gets the steal. Lovely hands. She's got the fast break. Can she make it? She can't. She misses. So Kobe Crispin being defended by three players who pops it back out. So Stewart, two points down. So Australia, a four-point lead now. This is the most they've led by. Can they build it? Lovely steal there from Keane and a foul's called. Schneider just trying to put a stop there to Australia getting too much momentum heading back down to the offensive end. So this gives the United States a chance to set their offense. So I'm not sure if you could quite catch that, but uh, Coach Kylie saying right now you're letting the defense rattle us. Let's refocus. Foul's called. Well, I honestly can't tell you what happened then. I thought he called a foul, but he just stopped play. I'm not exactly sure why. Well, got to be quick here. Gauchi saves it. Crispin. Has the shot. Oh. So the United States to have possession. So Crispin with the boards, heads down the left-hand side of the court, goes centre. It's not on, though. She pulled back out. She thought about going for it herself. Oh, dear. So another fumble. They're going to need to get a shot away here. 
Well, looked a bit ugly in the end. So the United States putting Australia under plenty of defensive pressure, but now they need to convert it at the other end of the court. So we're about to have a substantial substitution. Three players uh, from Australia are lining up in the substitution zone. So the United States not getting their shots to fall at the moment. So they're still trailing by four points in this semi-final. Gauchi misses but gets her own rebound. So, Toby Crispin. Nice little two points from her in that high percentage area. And so now a six point lead to the Australians. Nice defense from Stewart. Puts a stop to Holloman getting to the basket. Well, that was a dangerous pass. There were two defensive players on the American. They still passed it to her anyway. Such was the pressure that was on the ball, so forcing the error. United States continuing their strong rebounding efforts. And they found the inside player, but struggling a bit to get their shots to fall. Chaplin passes to Merritt. He's been so accurate, but not this time. They need to get out of the key, otherwise three seconds will be called. They've got a full reset of the shot clock. And Hills, for some reason, put herself right in the corner. Oh, and the pass is off. Slight mis misjudgment there. So the United States still maintaining possession, but they're under a lot of pressure and the shot clock goes, so.
Merritt with the ball. So 3.09 left in this third quarter. Nobody's scored for a while. It's been a few misses. So the opportunities are coming. But uh, neither side, under so much pressure, is able to close them out. So yet again, the shot clock shows how much pressure is uh, on them in the offensive stakes. And at the moment, six points isn't much, but it seems like a lot just because neither side is able to score. Two points from Gauchi. Another missed shot from the United States. It'll be interesting to check the shooting statistics at the half, at the three-quarter break. Certainly been a few attempts, not a lot of attempts, but a few, and there's just hasn't been much success at all. Chaplin fakes and then passes. A lovely two points, and Australia, with the help of Katie Hill just then, opening up an eight-point gap. This is the most either side is led by for the duration of this match, and we're nearly at three-quarter time, so it's been so close. The charge is called. So Australia just managing to gain a small advantage here. And as I said, the scoring opportunities are difficult to come by. So uh, if you look at the demeanor of the United States, they're looking a little shell-shocked at the moment. Not quite, uh, they're not really talking to each other as many, anywhere near as much as they were at the start of the game. Their demeanor has dropped to it's so important in this stage to not start feeling beaten, but keep your talk up, communication, and, of course, supporting your teammates. Not to start feeling intimidated. Oh, they found the gap. Couldn't finish it. Gauchi. Nice defense from Gauchi, but the two points is, is good from the United States. Oh, nice little pass through to Hill. It was a lovely cut through the key. They've combined very well together. So it's interesting with this Australian team, if it's not the, the usual name scoring, someone else is able to, to rise to the occasion, and that's been a real strength, the depth of this side. Miller muscles her way in, drops it over, but misfires. She thought her teammate was going to go with her, but she didn't. So what a surprise this is. Going into the three-quarter break, Australia is leading by 10 points. So 38 plays 28. And the United States, this is extraordinary, managed to score just two points in the third quarter. Australia, meantime, scored 12. It's not their best quarter scoring to date. However...
So Coach Kylie imploring to his team to just calm down. Let's have a listen in to the Australians as well. On occasions, but every second play run power with you two on the side and then Claire sitting outside for the shot. Yes? Shelly? Every second play run power. So the most important thing in a game of basketball, always respect your opponents. And that is exactly what the coach of Australia, John Triscari, was saying. They will come back. You've got to be ready for it. Coach Kylie for the United States saying, don't expect to overcome this 10-point deficit in one go. Just keep chipping away, chipping away. One basket at a time, pressuring and keeping your head. And he's also, I don't know if you heard it, but told... His players to take a deep breath. Oh, lovely. They come out firing, so number four, Murray. But, yes, tell, it told his players to take a deep breath into their belly and just relax and start focusing just a little more. So 38 plays 30. Can Australia hold off the United States if the surge comes? The surge will come. Crispin. So they're going to get under pressure here with the shot clock. The travel called, so a turnover. Another opportunity for the United States. Murray. Too easy for her. No, it's not. She's missed it. Gee, they needed that. It's interesting from the Australian perspective, no player, no one player has gotten into double figures yet on the individual scoring. So very interesting. It just shows what an even spread. Gauchi Merritt have both scored eight. Crispin not have scored six apiece. Stuart Hill scored four apiece. Chaplin threw it up in the end. It wasn't a nice looking shot. Now, Murray for the United States has, caught, has scored 14 and uh, Miller 12. The only other score is a two points apiece to Schneider and Holloman. And. Uh, both teams, well, they've got benches of seven players, both utilising them. You notice the combinations that they, they use, and mainly for the Australian side, uh, mainly because of the points you're allowed to have. You're allowed to have a total of 14 points. As the lob goes over to Merritt, who misses. So 14 points in terms of the player's ability and mobility on the court at any given time. So the more mobile the player, the higher the points you're given, up to a maximum of 4.5 points per player. So someone like Amber Merritt is uh, a 4.5 player, so of the most mobile. But uh, this young lady... On your screen, uh, Kobe Crispin is a 4.0 player. Gauchi is a 2.0 player. It's very fast around the court.
Australia with possession. Showing some patience. The foul's being called. So that foul was on uh, Nichols. Now that's her third foul. And Shelley Chaplin was the uh, Australian who was fouled. So in the contest. And here's Crispin. I'll tell you what, it's a little concerning with these shots not falling from an Australian perspective. So, was that eight seconds in the backcourt? Hang on, we'll find out. It may have been a foul. No, it's been a foul, I believe. Team turnover. It's either eight seconds in the backcourt or she went out of bounds. I'm sorry, I can't clear that up for you. But, uh, oh dear, terrible pass from Kylie Gauchi. She just sort of turfed it straight into an American player. So a turnover from the United States and we're seeing it again, a scoring shots are just not falling for either side. 38 plays 30. Just the United States to score the two points so far in this quarter and we're under seven minutes to go. Stewart, can she get a shot to fall? She can't, it's an air ball. So Crispin with the ball, weaves her way in and out of the USA players. Doesn't have a lot of space at the moment. Gauchi off target in this quarter. Oh, and Crispin's tipped over. So here's Murray. What can the United States come up with? So there was the help defense came across, but a foul was drawn. Uh, Gauchi's second personal foul. Second is successful. So the lead, seven points to the Australians. 5.56 left in the final quarter. This to go into the gold medal match of the women's wheelchair basketball at London 2012. So shot clock pressure here. So the United States with possession. And a fumble, a turnover.
The lob over to Keane. Oh, dear. Miss again. And so Murray. Now that's going to be a bit of a problem for Gauchi. That could have been a sign, siren to sub her off. Let's have a look at Gauchi's personal fouls. She has three. Okay, so it's not four. I thought it might have been four, but it's not. Nice little play here from the United States. So they're doing exactly what their coach asked them to, chipping away gradually at this deficit, and all of a sudden it's been cut from, from 10 points to 5 points in this final quarter. So Amber Merritt passes back out to Hill. Hill goes right. She looks into Merritt's long arms. Oh, dear. It's a terrible shot. She appealed to the referee, saying she was fouled. The referee didn't see it that way at all. So it be the United States possession, and you sense they've got the upper hand. The Australian team hasn't scored so far this quarter, but, gee, they've had a lot of opportunities to do so. Their shooting has been completely off in this quarter. So it's certainly a different tale. And in stark contrast, things are going all the United States way and all of a sudden they're only three points down. So the Australians now the ones they're leading, but they're under pressure. Their lead cut from 10 to 5, and they're yet to score in this quarter. It's all been the United States. The United States has scored seven points. So I'm sorry, the lead cut from 10 to 3, not 5. That was a one phase of play ago. It was five. So the Australians taking their time here. Oh, nice way to find the hole, but gee, really costly. They're just not getting their shots in. The good thing is they're not panicking. They're not rushing their offense, but the problem is they're just simply not finishing it off. Again, and if they're not finishing it off, they certainly need to get the rebounds. So Murray, who was encouraged by Coach Kylie to shoot in that last break, and all of a sudden there's one point in it. 38 plays. 37. And boy, are we headed for a close finish. Third foul for Darlene Hunter. 
And here's Merritt. I don't think she'll shoot from out there. But she doesn't have a lot of options. Oh, lovely. So finally, Claire Knott finds the basket. And can this light Australia up to hold off a resurgent United States of America? So the United States are able to find the gap, but they've missed a shot. So the Australians not rushing, not panicking, but they need to score here. Oh, didn't seem not cutting baseline. Nice little pass there. But no score. So that's costly for the Australians. We've got less than 90 seconds to play. They're only three points up. And the United States, well, they might be down, but they look so confident. It's a long lob in. Shot can't fall. But the difference is when they're not getting their shots, they're getting the rebounds. And so now the United States to go to the line. Alana Nichols will shoot two shots. So costly there. They needed to make those free throws. And where, where are the Australians? They've got to get it over the halfway mark by eight seconds. Mini fast break, but it's squatted away by Hunter. So a timeout called by Australia. So the gliders supporters in the stands there. Desi Miller, one of the strong performers with 12 points for the United States. Only got five seconds. Millet. She's going to have to shoot it. It's almost as if she didn't realise she had such little time left. So 43.1 on the clock. So this time, a timeout to the United States. So they'll discuss a play down this. So they either need, well, they really need to score four points or at least three to force it to overtime. So Please. 
Okay, so <laughs> imploring to teammates not to commit any more fouls and send the United States to the line. So we've manned up on defense and uh, the loose player at the top has a switch. So they're being careful not to foul, but the United States, oh dear. So 27.2 seconds left and uh, we've had another timeout called, this time by Australia. So it can't get much closer than this. 40 plays, 39. So the clock, 26.7 seconds left, and uh, it's quite a bit of time for either side. Certainly it's more than enough time for the United States to snatch a win here, and that's a foul. Will it be called unsportsmanlike? It was certainly appeared to be intentional. All right, so Merritt will go to the line for two shots, and never has it been more critical to make these free throws. So that means Desi Miller has been fouled out for the United States. 12 points to Desi Miller. She's had a great game. She won't mind that. She'll probably think it was worth that <laughs> last foul. So they're banking on Merritt missing these free throws, then getting the possession and running a very quick offense. This is both. Could prove costly. So Australia needs to get a stop here, but the United States are on the attack. They're only going to have time to get one shot away. It's going to be close. 1.9 on the clock. I hope Chaplin isn't smiling a little too early there. They sense victory. The Australians are all smiling ever so slightly, but they're not out of the danger zone yet. Upset. Australia defeats the United States by a single point to make it into the gold medal match of the women's wheelchair basketball tournament at London 2012. They can hardly hide their delight, nor should they. 
gee, they had to work for it. Oh, the emotion from the American players. They are going to have to settle for playing off for the bronze medal because it is the gliders that are going to have a shot at gold. They're guaranteed a medal now. It will be gold or silver. And they can't quite believe it. They were up by 10 points. The United States bitterly disappointed. But what a thrilling game that was. It was so close, such intensity. And so it was a tale of two very different quarters, the third quarter and the fourth quarter. In the, the fourth quarter, so you remember in the third quarter, the United States only scored two points. Well, that's what happened to Australia in the fourth quarter. They only scored two points. The United States scored 11 points in the fourth quarter, but Australia just held on. They missed so many shots. It's quite extraordinary. Shot after shot was missed. And uh, if we look at the team statistics, Australia's shooting percentage dropped to a woeful 33%, and the United States were at 45%. So. They could have actually made it a far bigger win margin had they been able to get some more of their shots in. But that's taking nothing away from the United States. They were resurgent. They kept their heads. They kept calm. But in the end, they just couldn't quite get there. So that gold medal match is tomorrow. They will face either the Netherlands or Germany, the two European powerhouses that will play off next in the semi-final. So there you can see it. Australia's shooting percentage. They had so many more opportunities than the United States. It's quite extraordinary and it dropped off horribly to 33%. Turnovers from the United States really hurt them. 28 turnovers for the team. And uh, for the rebounds, they out-rebounded Australia by 10, 34-24. And uh, look, fouls were round about the same. Uh, steals, well, Australia had a number more. Assists as well. So that wraps up our coverage of the first semi-final of the women's wheelchair basketball, but still so much basketball to be played. We have the second semi-final and also the men's semi-finals coming up this evening. Thanks for your company for this match, though. My name's Amy Bainbridge, and I'll speak to you soon.